a joyful time that we can all come together as a family, as a body of Christ. And Father, we thank you because uh, you love us so much that you use your word to prune us to, so that we can be fruitful. You use your word to renew our mind so that our lives can be transformed. You use your word to strengthen our faith. So Father, we thank you and help us to live by faith. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So this, book, this month uh, of August, I'm going to have a series uh, for three Sundays. Uh, so the series uh, is about healthy relationship, healthy emotions. Uh, just, uh, you know, in the past uh, maybe one or two months, uh, our uh, team has been talking about, you know, what would be our focus as our ministry. And uh, uh, so I was thinking about, you know, you know the terms like the branding. You know, what, is, what would be the branding of our church? What would be standing out uh, for our church among all the churches? And uh, I would ask, as I was uh, just uh, asking myself this question, one thing came to my mind. I really desire uh, our uh, members, everybody in our church, to be healthy. Uh, not just physically healthy, uh, but uh, more importantly, spiritual health and emotional health, mental health, as well as uh, relational health. I think it's very, very important because I believe that uh, God, uh, Jesus came to save us not so that we can uh, go to heaven in our spirit after we die, but also He wants to save our whole being, uh, including our body, soul, and spirit, and even our family, our relationship. So I believe that holistic health is God's heart. So it's important that uh, we all work together toward holistic health in our body, soul, and spirit. So, uh, with, with that uh, desire in my heart, uh, I have uh, come, up to get, come up with uh, this series, uh, which is about healthy relationship and healthy emotions. When you look at these two, they are actually uh, interconnected. Not only these two are interconnected, but also uh, all the areas I just mentioned about, uh, just uh, you know, the physical health and, and also spiritual health. Uh, they all uh, are connected with each other. Uh, so when we, took, when we look at just these two, when you have healthy relationship, it helps with your emotional health. In other words, if you have a good family relationship, you have good friends around you, more likely you have uh, healthy emotions. On the other hand, if you have healthy emotions, you're happy, you're peaceful, you know, people love to be around you, and more likely you enjoy healthy relationship. Uh, so these two are actually influencing each other. Uh, so as we are talking about this uh, series, uh, we want to have this in our mind. And uh, uh, the three topics I'm going to talk about in this month, uh, the first one is over defense, which is what I'm going to talk about uh, today. And uh, uh, next Sunday, I'm going to talk about offense and unforgiveness. And uh, the third week, I'm going to talk about heart-to-heart -heart connection. Uh, so hopefully, uh, in these uh, three subjects, we'll just uh, learn together from the Word of the Lord how we can enjoy and build good, uh, healthy relationship and healthy emotions. So today, uh, we're going to talk about over-defense. We all know that sometimes it can be over-defensive. Uh, uh, not in terms of physical over-defense, but uh, in our relationship, sometimes we can be a little bit over-defensive. Yeah, because uh, there can be some misunderstanding, there could be a past hurt in our life, so as a result, we can be over-defensive sometimes. Um, so, uh, although we are familiar with this kind of idea, but we don't necessarily understand or fully comprehend the impact of over-defense to our emotional health as well as our relational health. So today, 
I hope that uh, we can openly, we can open our hearts to each other, we can talk about open defense, and we can examine ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us to see if there is uh, some areas of over defense that we can actually learn to overcome. Okay, so um, we're going to look at the first of Second Samuel chapter ten, verses one to four. I'm going to read this read this passage to you at the same time. Uh, make some comments along uh, the way. So uh, this this is the story about King David. Um, Actually, uh, you know, the story lasts uh, probably less than a chapter. Uh, so, you know, among all the story of uh, David, this is not a big deal. Uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, we can actually learn from this story. Okay? So, after the king of Ammonites died, and uh, Hanan, his son, uh, reigned in his place. And David said, I will deal loyally with Hanan, the son of uh, Nahash, as his father dealt loyally with me. So David sent by his servants to console him concerning his father. So here we see that uh, you know, David is such a man after God's own heart. So he's a, he knows uh, you know, uh, how to be loyal to people and uh, uh, to be uh, faithful. Uh, at the same time, grateful, and even want to uh, just continue his uh, loyal relationship uh, to the son of his friend. So, you know, he has all this good intention. Sometimes uh, it might be uh, difficult to find people like that, especially, uh, you know, among the kingdoms, among the nations. Uh, so, you know, just really precious that David has this kind of uh, uh, heart toward uh, his friend. Uh, his friend's son. And uh, uh, let me read on. Uh, in, uh, and then uh, David's servants came into the land of the Ammonites. But the princes of the Ammonites uh, said to Hanan, their lord, the king, Do you think because of David he sent covenants to you that he is honoring your father? Do you think he's, he really wants to do what he says? So in other words, uh, they were suspicious of the motives of David. They uh, didn't believe that King David can have this kind of goodwill. So they misinter obviously misinterpreted what David uh, wants to do. Uh, and then uh, he, uh, he can, they continue to say, Has not David sent his servants to you? to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it. Wow, so that's going to be quite the opposite of uh, David's intention. So Hanan took David's servants and shaved off half of the beard of each. Uh, just imagine, uh, so some of, uh, some of the guys have beard here, but not as long as uh, those guys uh, back in uh, more than 2,000 years ago. Just imagine, you know, uh, just half of uh, Clay's beard was just shaved off and he was leading here with uh, worship. And he would be just, uh, you know, totally you know, humiliating, of course. And then and what's even worse is that uh, they, uh, they cut off the garments in the middle and their hips and send them away. Wow. So this is how he treated the ambassador, uh, ambassadors of Israel. So the way you treat an ambassador is basically saying how you treat the nation. Uh, so you are humiliating the ambassadors, so you are humiliating the nation of Israel as well as the King David. So this is really bad. Uh, just imagine, you know, Hannah was really ready for a war, okay? And that, this is what, what happened later. Uh, uh, just, uh, uh, so, of course, David was really mad, and then uh, uh, when Hannah knew that David was mad, so he said, oh, so David is going to attack us. So he rallied around, uh, uh, around him uh, just uh, armies from four or five other countries. So, you know, his over-defense causes wars between five to six countries. So tens of, th tens of thousands of soldiers and even 
you know, uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of soldiers, they came out and fight each other, killed each other. And then uh, that affected as many, as, uh, uh, as many families as that uh, uh, number of soldiers. So you see just one over defense can be that serious. Oh, uh, can be that uh, serious. Uh, so uh, to, uh, today uh, we see that uh, you know, over defense uh, uh, is, can be quite common in our daily lives. Uh, we know that uh, you know, since uh, our world is not perfect, so everybody can sin against each other. So ever since we were young, we learned how to defend ourselves. We learn how to protect ourselves uh, because we've been hurt. So the next time we decided, I'm not going to get hurt again. I don't want to be painful. Uh, so I need to take some uh, protective uh, measure uh, and to, to uh, defend myself. So actually self-defense is not necessarily a problem. It's not necessarily bad. But the issue we are talking about is over-defense like the story we just read, where you misinterpret other people's motives, and then you take uh, some defensive measure that is not proper, and even can be offensive to other people. That's over-defense, and that can really cause problems in our lives. Uh, so over-defense uh, can be a problem in our relationship, and it can be also have some kind of consequences in our emotional health too. Because you just imagine, if somebody is uh, is very defensive all the time, you know, he has to that person has to spend a lot of energy kind of guarding himself when he's around people, and then uh, so that can be very draining, and uh, that can be very distracting, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, that can become offensive to people. So. Um, we know that uh, the story we just read is a story of over-defense. And then uh, today, I just want to uh, take the opportunity to examine our own experience and our own heart to see if there is uh, any area uh, that can be over-defensive. Okay? And uh, uh, I have seen many people who, are, who can be over-defensive a lot of times. And uh, uh, for those people, uh, that becomes uh, part, of their, part of their personality. Uh, so uh, that causes tension in their relationship and sometimes uh, can be offensive in their relationship. So as a result, uh, those people cannot be, uh, can, can be unhappy or even unsuccessful because if their relationship is not healthy, is not happy, then uh, it would hurt their performance of the poor relationship. And uh, the poor relationship can, can cause uh, their poor emotions. And poor emotions can also affect their physical health. So some people, they struggle with their physical health. And the reason could be over-defensive. So this is something that we don't want to ne uh, neglect. Uh, we, we want to learn how we can deal with this kind of uh, uh, situation, this kind of uh, uh, personality issue. And uh, um, in our life, uh, uh, there are a lot of examples of over defense. So I'm going to start with myself. Okay. So, um, you know, growing up, uh, you know, my mom is a very typical Taiwanese mom. My mom is an awesome mom, very, very loving, and uh, just, uh, she does everything to help, uh, to, to serve us and to love us. But just like a lot of uh, Chinese moms, uh, they worry a lot. Uh, so when there is any problem, they immediately they think of the worst scenario. Okay, and uh, when they think of that, when the you know Chinese mom think of the worst scenario, uh, that sometimes uh, they can be just uh, you know uh, safe, uh, you know, just uh, they can be uh, condemning your uh, motives. For example, if I'm uh, going, uh, you know, going home later than usual, and she would say, where did you go? Uh, did you go out to do something bad? Or uh, did you go out with your girlfriend? Uh, things like that. Uh, so, you know, to me, I was like, no, 
it was just uh, for le legitimate reasons I was late, and then she was she would be just accusing me of uh, something she was uh, worrying about first. Uh, so you know she was just worried about me, but to me that was uh, you know condemning, that was uh, you know, accusing. Uh, so growing up in that kind of situation, I just feel like you know I it's hurt it's hurtful to be to be uh, just uh, you know. Uh, you know, condemned or accused. Uh, so I, I can, oh, can I can be over defensive uh, sometimes when people are you know criticizing me or saying something about my performance or questioning me, that kind of things. So that affected uh, uh, my intimate relationship. So of course uh, my relationship with my wife. Sometimes when we got into uh, quarrels. And then uh, uh, she had been just uh, upset and started criticizing me. And then I would be so mad and I, you know, over defensive. And I started saying, "Stop accusing me! Don't condemn me! You know, I, I'm, I'm so upset about this." Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, so uh, it, it, it just it, it just uh, became frequent uh, in our uh, just uh, argument. So uh, to me, that's a uh, that's an over defensiveness. Of course, I learned uh, from that. Uh, I I, uh, I want to uh, correct myself uh, from the over defensiveness. Yeah. So uh, these kind of things uh, we can see that a lot of times, uh, you know, the over defensiveness uh, come from our past wounds, and uh, uh, and also uh, it uh, it is painful. Uh, we we just uh, you know try to avoid the same uh, hurtful, uh, painful uh, scenario. Uh, so we, we become defensive and it become even become offensive. Uh, it's, and uh, besides this uh, example of myself, myself, uh, we can also encounter some people. You know, some people uh, they you may find some people they are defending themselves all the time. If you try to uh, tell them some issues they might have, and their reaction can be very strong. They may take it personally, and uh, uh, they would try to find excuses uh, for their behavior, or mistakes, uh, things like that. So when you uh, when you find people, especially maybe even yourself, uh, keep finding excuses for yourself, then uh, you know that you may be. Uh, over defending yourselves. So for uh, this kind of a situation, it's pretty common in our uh, in our relationship. So it's important that we need to learn to uh, uh, just uh, hear people's uh, comments about us, and especially in the church, uh, the Bible tells us to speak the truth in love. Everybody has blind spots in their lives. Okay, well, blind spots means that everybody sees that problem, and you just you are the only one who doesn't see the problem. And so, how do you deal with it? You have to be able to willing to listen to others uh, speaking the truth in love. Then uh, you can learn how to change yourself, to correct yourself. Uh, so it's very important that uh, we. You know, instead of uh, defending ourselves uh, immediately, we want to be humble to uh, hear others' uh, uh, suggestions or advice to us. And so for some people, they may act like, oh, they don't care, you know, uh, they're pretty cool, so whatever you say, whatever, and I don't care. Uh, so for people like that, actually, they, they actually care about you very much. But it's just uh, as a you know defense uh, mechanism. They pretend that they don't care at all. Uh, so sometimes we can be deceived when this kind of situations happens. So that can be uh, some case, that can be a case of uh, over defense. And then uh, I also know in some cases uh, growing up, uh, the the parents can be very dominant. Uh, so as a result, the children have uh, learned not to express how they feel or what they think. Because the parents, especially in the Asian uh, context, uh, so a lot of times we require the 
the children to be obedient uh, without questioning. Sometimes it can happen. When it happens, uh, the dominant parenting uh, scenario, the children uh, learn to protect themselves and defend themselves by not expressing themselves so, so that they would not get into trouble. Uh, so uh, as a result, um, even in their relationship with their superior, uh, or in the school, in, uh, you know, at work, uh, or even at church, you know, when they, they, you know, when they, they were asked to express their opinions or uh, their perception, a lot of times they just, you know, they are very quiet, they don't really express themselves. Uh, but uh, after a while, you know that they actually they have their opinions. They're pretty strong. They just don't want to let you know. They do uh, their own thing. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, also uh, can be a defense uh, mechanism. Uh, so um, we know that uh, when we over when we are over defensive, we can uh, be uh, misinterpreting people's motives. We can be over reacting and. Uh, 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 and also, over defensiveness can become offensive. Uh, so, uh, that causes a lot of uh, uh, relational issues. Uh, so, uh, we don't want to be over defensive. We don't want to assume that other people want to hurt you uh, or uh, have some evil intention to you. Uh, and uh, so, I here I just want to also. Uh, mention that uh, uh, mention again. Over defense uh, can become an offense. So uh, that that's uh, something that we feel like. Oh, I, I don't mean to harm to harm you, but your over, being over defensive can actually be offensive. Uh, so when, when I was thinking about what are the causes of over defensive, uh, I came up with uh, three causes of uh, over defense. The first one is the past wounds, which I mentioned earlier. And everybody has some wounds. It doesn't matter what kind of family you're from, what kind of culture you're from, everybody has some past wounds. It's because uh, all men are sinful. And uh, even if all men are perfect, you know, nobody is sinful, we, still mis we can still misunderstand each other. Uh, so, out of these reasons, we hurt each other easily. So the past wounds, if, if they are not dealt with, and that can cause over-defensiveness. And then because of the past wounds, that causes fear. I don't know about you, but for me, you know, if I have some painful experience, I will stay away the uh, similar scenario as much as possible, because I don't want to get uh, hurt again, I don't want to be painful again. I hate pain, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, just from the past ones, uh, we can have fear, and out of fear, we will, we have to, we are inclined, we can be inclined to be over defensive. So fear is something that can really hurt our emotional health and our relational health, okay? So number three reason for over defensiveness can be mistrust. So of course, uh, because of the wounds, because of the fear, we don't uh, we don't feel comfortable trusting uh, other people in our relationship. Uh, just like uh, in the story we just uh, talked about, uh, King Hanan, uh, the uh, king of the Ammonites. Uh, so he assumed that David uh, was uh, having some kind of uh, evil intention. So he could not trust David. As a result, he uh, was over defensive. So these are the three major possible causes of uh, over defensiveness. So how do we deal with them? So I want to propose to you, suggest to you, four ways we can uh, just uh, solve uh, the over defensiveness. Okay, so the first one is let God be your healing. Let God be your healing. 
So in Psalm 147, let's read it together. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Okay, let's read it again. Again. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Uh, this is what God does. And we praise God for this. He heals the brokenhearted. So when we have wounds, we have uh, you know, painful memories in our eyes. We know that we can give it to the Lord and He wants to heal us. And He binds up our wounds. So this is what God wants to do. This is uh, what He can do. And also let's look at Isaiah 61 where we find also the similar promises. Let's read it again. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and an opening of prison to those who are bound. Uh, we know that this passage is speaking of uh, uh, Messiah, Jesus Christ. So uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus because uh, he was anointed to bring good news to the poor, and uh, Jesus was sent to bind up the brokenhearted. Jesus came to the world 2,000 years ago with one goal, that is to heal the brokenhearted. So salvation is not just to give us eternal life, but also to heal our heart, to heal our uh, emotional wounds, and, and also our, our relational wounds. So Jesus is after our emotional health, emotional healing, Relation, relational health and relational healing. Okay? So, um, the first thing that we need to do uh, to correct our over defensiveness is to uh, allow Jesus to heal our heart. Um, so, how do you do that? You just need to be honest with God. It's so important, and I've preached about this before. You know, the true faith that God really desires from us is that we can trust Him so much that we feel so secure before Him, we can open up our lives completely to Him. We can open up our history, our past wounds, completely to Him. You know, that's faith. That's called real faith. That is, uh, you know, pleasing to God. And you will, have, you will be rewarded by this kind of faith. As you open up, you are being so vulnerable before the Lord, and, and just uh, you know, just share all the things that you cannot share with anybody else, and uh, and, and you can share it to your uh, uh, somebody you trust, brother and sister, you can trust, and then uh, you share it before the Lord in your prayers. Open up your hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to come and, and just uh, touch you with His love and heal you supernaturally. And even your, the memory center of your brain can be healed. Do you believe that? You know, the, the, uh, actually, the scientist uh, tells us that we have uh, you know, memory centers in the brain, we have uh, pain centers in the brain. Yeah, so you know, our you know, past uh, uh, wounded uh, experience are actually in our uh, nervous system. And as we open up all these to the Lord, God heal our memory and He can heal our brain. And it's very amazing, it's very important that we do that. And uh, as we uh, can open up our hearts to the Lord, God can heal our emotion, He can heal our brain, and He can heal our relationship with other people. And, uh, you know, I, I think of a, I thought of an illustration of, uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, broken heart. Uh, that is, uh, you see this uh, sunglass, okay? Um, so I would say that uh, uh, over defensiveness is like uh, you, in your heart, you have a broken glass. Well, it's not broken. Anyway, so just imagine, just uh, let's imagine it's broken, okay? And then uh, when 
you know, uh, some, how many of you wear glasses? Uh, only a few of you? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I believe you, you can still relate to this. If you wear a glass with a broken lens, can you see things very clearly? Everything would become distorted and broken. Okay? So, in other words, when we have broken heart, we have some wounds in our emotions. It's like we are wearing a broken glass. And we see everything, we, and we interpret everything around us uh, with some kind of brokenness. In other words, you can never see the truth as it is. You, always mis you, can, you can often misunderstand people's motives, and you can easily fall into over-defensiveness. So uh, we need to allow uh, the Holy Spirit to come to the depth of our heart, of our emotions, of our history, so that when, we, when our emotions are healed, uh, we can restore with a, you know, a sound perspective by which we can see the truth and the reality of life and people uh, around you. So the first solution uh, for over defensiveness is that we need to let God be our healing, be our healer. Number two, uh, to heal our over defensiveness, let God be your shield. Uh, I love this. I love these uh, passages uh, which talks about uh, God being our shield, proclaim of faith, uh, proclamation of faith. So uh, Psalms 28 verse 7, let's read it again. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In Him my heart trusts and I am held. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to Him. Wow, see just how this uh, psalmist was so happy. He was singing, he was rejoicing uh, because he can trust in the Lord. And trust in the Lord so that the Lord becomes his strength, becomes his shield, and he can trust in the Lord. So, uh, you know, when we are defending ourselves, we are trying to, you know, do it in our own way, artificial ways to protect ourselves. But if you have God as your shield, you are most safe. Because God said, the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Okay? So the safest protection is not from yourself. You can do everything you can. You cannot protect yourself 100%. And a lot of times you screw up. You end up hurting other people. But if you allow God to be your shield, let Him to be your shield, you can relax. You can be yourself. You can be free. At the same time, God protects you, and uh, uh, you uh, and, and you are so you can be secure. So um, I think one of the best strategy for a good relationship is that you put down your over defensiveness. Let God protect you. Do you believe that God can protect you? Amen. He is your shield. Can protect you. And sometimes, um, you know, just uh, uh, the, the key to enjoy life is to allow God to protect you uh, so that uh, you don't have to be so alert, so alarmed all the time, and become so anxious and, and draining uh, with all these uh, self defensiveness. Okay? And uh, uh, as you uh, are protected and secure in God, you can be relaxed, you can be restful, and you can enjoy your relationship, you can be free to love other people. You know, if you are overprotecting yourself, can you love other people? You can't. So it's important for us to be loving. We need to lay down our over-defensiveness. Uh, so, let me ask you a question. Do you want to defend yourself or do you want to let God defend you? Let God be your shield. Number three, how do we uh, overcome our defensiveness? Is to choose to trust. 
choose to trust. Choose to trust God and choose to trust other people. So Hannah, King Hannah, he chose not to trust King David. But instead, he uh, chose to believe that uh, David was going to hurt him. So as a result, he suffered uh, from a great uh, calamity and war. Okay, so uh, let's read the passage we just read earlier again. Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In Him my heart trusts. And I'm helped, my heart exalts, and with my, with my song I give thanks to Him. So we want to trust in the Lord first. Okay? And then uh, we also choose to trust people. So I really like uh, the English uh, saying, give the benefits of doubt. Give the benefits of doubt. You know, in Chinese, there is no such thing as this. Give the benefits of doubt. Uh, so uh, when I learn this expression, and I think, wow, this makes sense. Because a lot of times, we don't know, you know what people are uh, thinking about. Uh, so do you want to choose to be suspicious? Or you want to choose uh, to be trusting, and uh, and uh, uh, and actually, uh, uh, First Corinthians uh, chapter thirteen uh, says that love uh, believes. So it's important uh, when we love people, we choose to trust, to choose to believe in people, and uh, instead of over defensive. So when we uh, trust in people, that's when we can love. Okay. Uh, if you just uh, choose to distrust people, then you will spend all your energy protecting yourself. You don't have energy to love other people. Okay? And the ironic thing is that the more you want to defend yourself, the more you will cause arguments and troubles. Uh, and the more you can hurt yourself. Because like I said earlier, Overdefensive uh, can be uh, can be offensive. So when you offend other people, other people will in turn offend you and hurt you. So overdefensive actually brings more hurt to yourself. So you get into these kind of vicious cycles uh, and of hurting yourself. So uh, let's uh, let down this kind of uh, uh, overdefensiveness. And number four, uh, how we deal with over defensiveness is let God be your judge. Um, we know that uh, uh, one of the reasons uh, we, we over defend is because we would like to uh, try to figure out people's motives. Uh, so a lot of times we uh, become judgmental of people's motives. So uh, uh, you know, quick to, when we are quick to judge, then we can get into some kind of a, a, get into over defensiveness and then get ourselves into trouble. So let's uh, read the Psalm uh, 50, uh, verse 6. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. God himself is judge. Jesus is my judge. Jesus is your judge. So don't try to judge people around you. Don't try to be quick to judge their uh, motives and then uh, uh, become uh, distrusting them. And then, uh, uh, and then you become over defensiveness. So, um, you know, it's important uh, that we do what Jesus tells us. Do not judge others unless you be judged, okay? All right, so uh, I think uh, besides uh, these four points, uh, probably the best cure for over-defense is love. Instead of uh, thinking about yourself and worrying about yourself being hurt, you want to be loving. You want to take the initiative to love other people. And sometimes the best way to defend, to, to protect yourself, is to be uh, initiative in loving other people. 
Because when you show your goodwill to people, you uh, you reach out to love other people, and uh, uh, and, and people. When they sense your goodwill, they also will show their goodwill to you. So that's the best way to protect yourself. And of course, uh, in David's case with Hannah, uh, he showed his goodwill, but it was mis misunderstood. That can happen. Uh, so even this kind of situ uh, situation happens, you still want your love to persist uh, so that uh, uh, people will know uh, in the long run your goodwill to them. Okay. So today uh, we uh, learned uh, that for us to enjoy emotional health or to build our emotional health or a healthy relationship, it's important that we deal with our defense mechanism and uh, not to uh, overwork our defense mechanism. And uh, we would be willing to open our hearts to the Lord and trust in Him, allow Him to heal our hearts, allow and invite Him to be our shield, and also choose to trust other people, and then uh, uh, humble ourselves not to be too quick to judge, and let God be our judge, and not ourselves be the judge. Okay? And uh, so in our application, uh, besides uh, these practical uh, solutions. And I also want to suggest to you, sometimes when you feel offended and you, you, you become defensive, you want to think about, you want to examine your heart. Are you being insecure? And uh, is it, are you um, offended because of your insecurity? Sometimes people don't need to offend you. But because of your insecurity, you interpret others as being offensive to you. So sometimes uh, when I'm offended, I would ask myself, is it because of my insecurity that I'm offended? It's not really because of people's intention to hurt me. So um, today, um, I just uh, want to bring, about, uh, bring up the issue of over-defensiveness. And uh, let's examine this subject together and examine our own hearts to see if uh, there could be some over-defensiveness in our hearts. And then uh, learn in our relationship to be trusting, uh, trusting in the Lord and trusting in other people. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Father, um, we thank you that you are our security. You are our shield. We can put our trust in you. And a lot of times, uh, instead of putting our trust in you, we try to uh, use our own means to protect ourselves. So today, we want to repent before you for not trusting in you for our protection, for overdoing defensiveness. And uh, sometimes we can become offensive to other people and uh, hurting our relationship. So today, as we are humbling ourselves to see this issue in our lives, we uh, confess our problems, our issues, our sins to you. And uh, we invite you to not only forgive us, but also to help us, to strengthen us, to strengthen our faith in you, uh, so that uh, we don't have to struggle in our uh, self-defense. Father, we thank you. And uh, uh, right now, um, I just uh, encourage you to even open, open up your hearts to the Lord. Maybe in, uh, in this uh, meeting, the Holy Spirit has reminded you of some painful memories, some past wounds. Or maybe your family, uh, there has been some unpleasant experiences and uh, and God wants to reach in to the depth of your memory, to your heart uh, to heal you uh, I encourage you either now or sometime uh, you just come before the Lord with a you know, more extended time of waiting before the Lord 
pour out your heart to the Lord. Your frustration, your pain, your anger, your bitterness to the Lord. And、uh, it's okay to do that. Because even before you say that, God already knows all that is in you. What He needs, what you need to do is that you trust Him enough to open up and pour out to Him. And God honors that. And God does not、uh, despise this kind of mentality. He wants to reach in. He wants to reach out to you. Let Him do that. And even sometimes,、uh, you know, God may just、uh, reveal to you, you know, in your、uh, maybe relational issues with somebody you care, and then maybe God is showing you that, you know, that the root of the issue is really your、uh, over defensiveness. So you can repent to the Lord for this, and even go to the people,、uh, go to the other person, and、uh, just、uh, reconcile with the person. With, with the person. Father, we thank you. We just、uh, lay down our guards, and、uh, we want to uh, just uh, put on you as our shield. We want to put on Jesus as our full armor, as we uh, just uh, hide ourselves in the Lord, Almighty God,、uh, is our protection. Thank you, Jesus.